got the moment to strike, I don't hesitate I'm feeling like winning, they spitting the venom But I got the power, I ain't afraid, I ain't afraid I'm in your face, forget tomorrow, man, I'm here today One set up for good, man, I'm shooting for great I remember my name when I'm in the grave, yeah All in, not pretending, Hall of Fame in with the veterans I ain't playing weak, no, I'm playing for keeps Can't stop me, I'm a legend I run with the crew that's making the moves Get out of the way, we coming through We got this, never stopping, and we won't lose No, we can't lose This is the Maruti Suzuki Jimny and it's a model a lot of you have been waiting for. It's a model that I have been waiting for and I am so, so glad it's finally here. Over the course of this video, I'll tell you what it's like on the outside, what it's like on the inside, what it's like to drive on the road and of course, what it's like to drive off the road. Question is, is it all that we hoped it would be? You know what? Let me get straight to the juiciest bit of the Jimny experience, off-roadability. Basic ingredients are all there because the Jimny is built on a robust ladder frame chassis, there's rigid axles with coil springs front and rear, and of course, the key element is Suzuki's all-grip pro hardware that, in simple English, is four-wheel drive with low range. There's also the helping hand of hill start assist, hill descent control and brake locking differentials. Maruti's off-road test route around a dry riverbed near Dehradun didn't feel like a curated experience and actually gave a real-world taste of the Jimny's capabilities. I think the toothy grins will tell you how the Jimny did. So the boulders around me are pretty, pretty serious. Uh, not the place for your average compact SUV. Okay, this is going to be the worst obstacle because it is a 20 yes, foot more drop. Right, more right, yeah. Oh Stop my right. god. Sorry to use this cliche, but the Jimny really climbs up like a mountain goat. So how did the Jimny perform over this off-road course? I will have to say it did pretty damn well. Let's start with what makes it work. For one, its size and weight truly is a virtue in the rough. Now this is a relatively low car so it doesn't feel top heavy on side inclines and the tricky stuff. And because it's not all that wide, you can manage to make it through the narrowest portions of a trail without really worrying about scraping the sides. The other thing is visibility is really good. These upright pillars, the flat bonnet whose extremities you can see with ease really put you in a comfortable position behind the wheel. Then there's the matter of the weight. It weighs 500 kilos less than a Mahindra Thar. So that's less load on the surface below you and less load on the engine as well. I'll talk of the naturally aspirated petrol engine in more detail in a bit, but the vital statistics are 1462 cc, 105 hp, and 134 newton meters. Now, this 1.5 liter engine has pretty humdrum specs, but in a low speed setting as this, it hasn't really posed a problem at all over everything that we've put it through. The torque multiplication, of course, of the gearbox helps, and uh, you know, it, it just feels very comfortable, very light on its feet and that's what you want in a setting as rough as this. Engaging four-wheel drive literally gives the Jimny wings. A side note, capability-wise, I didn't find any difference between the manual and automatic gearbox versions. The 210 millimeters of ground clearance also seems more than adequate for the job. We cross the stream without breaking into a sweat. Approach, departure angles, all put to the test. We even tried out the hill descent control system that limits uh, speed to 10 kilometers an hour in four high and five kilometers an hour in four low. Worked seamlessly, didn't need to intervene with the brakes. A word of appreciation for the brake locking differential too that helped the Jimny find traction just when it seemed the fight was over up a steep incline. So really, I mean, I'm honestly quite amazed by all that the Jimny can do and in reasonable comfort at that. 
And if your benchmark for off-road ability is the old Gypsy, you will be bowled over by the Jimny because everything that was wrong with the Gypsy has seemingly been addressed on the Jimny. So it'll do all the very same obstacles, but it will do it with a greater degree of comfort refinement. You don't get thrown around, chucked around as you did in a Gypsy. The suspension also comes across as way more sophisticated. The feeling from behind the wheel at least is of greater articulation. And what that means is that all your tires seem grounded at all points of time and that gives a greater feeling of connect with the surface below you and that firm footing really matters in the rough and mind you the Jimny has done everything today on stock high weighted end tires I can't even imagine what it would do when upgraded to all-terrain tires the three-door Jimny sold abroad has made a name for itself in off-road circles and I think the India spec longer five-door model is going to do the same here too. To answer the question many of you have had, the Jimny didn't feel limited by its ramp breakover angle. For those not in the know, the India spec car's 300mm longer wheelbase has resulted in a reduced 24 degree ramp breakover angle versus the international three-door model's 28 degree figure. Speaking of which, I think the design team has done a really good job with the length extension. It doesn't look unnaturally stretched and pulls off the block-like and squared out off-roader stance with ease, all within a small footprint. End to end, the Jimny measures just under 4 meters long and that's including the width of the tail mounted spare tire. At 16.45mm wide, it's narrower than your average hatchback and the 17.20mm height isn't imposing either. It's not an intimidating off-roader like a Thar or Gurkha if that's something important to you. Styling is cheerful and many details link this 4th generation Jimny to its predecessors. For instance, the clamshell bonnet and streaks near the A-pillar establish a connect with the Gypsy we're familiar with. The 5-slot grille outlined here in chrome and round headlamps are other classic Jimny details. The top spec alpha trim gets bright LED headlamps and also get headlamp washers, which are handy when you're traversing dusty or mucky terrain. Also helpful in rocky environments are the bumpers and cladding that are finished to conceal scratches. The huge gap between the tires and bodywork is hard to miss though. Top spec alpha versions get alloy wheels, while the lower zeta versions use steel rims. At the rear, the spare tire takes pride of place with the lights position low down on the bumper. Buyers also have the option to jazz up their Jimny's look with official accessories packages. What do you think of the Maruti Suzuki Jimny? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the Autocar India channel and hit that bell icon to be updated every time we have a new video up. Flap type door handles are your first point of contact with the Jimny and access to the front seat is convenient via the large front doors. The sound on door shut is reassuring too. And once you're inside, you sure will feel like you're in an off-roader because it's got the typical traits of cliff face sides, this upright pillar and squared out bonnet and it all comes together really, really well. The interior is also really nicely done and goes with the overall theme of the Jimny. I really like the fact uh, that it gets orange backlit instruments which link the Jimny to the original Gypsy that we used to get. You also get a grab handle for the front passenger. Again, a nice and sturdy touch for this kind of vehicle. And new age touches on the inside include Maruti's 9-inch touchscreen that packs in wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I also really like the climate control knobs. They're nice and chunky and great to use on the go. You also get these toggle-like switches for the front power windows, hill descent control and electronic stability control. Drivers can operate the rear power windows via buttons between the front seats. Features-wise, the Jimny also packs in push-button start, a leather-wrapped steering wheel with audio controls and cruise control. You do miss niceties like an auto-dimming mirror and a sunroof. Also wish there was some provision for off-road specific extras like an inclinometer, tilt meter and compass. The Jimny does get quite a few safety features as standard such as 6 airbags, ESC and Isofix child seat mounts. The Jimny complies with India's safety regulations but hasn't been tested by Global NCAP as yet. There are no soft touch plastics on the inside of a Jimny but you do get some nice textures on the dashboard top. Thing is, whatever you touch does feel quite scratchy. Then again, it is quite acceptable for what is a rugged SUV. 
where the Jimny will leave you wanting is in in-cabin storage spaces. For a vehicle that's very high on utility in other areas, the Jimny is surprisingly short on spaces for smaller items. For instance, you get only two cup holders for the entire cabin and they're placed between the front seats. The glove box isn't all that large. There is a recess for the front passenger, but again, not very usable. The recess at the base of the center console isn't large enough to hold your smartphone. The door pockets don't feature bottle holders and are actually quite narrow. The Jimny seats you nice and high, but some drivers will miss seat height adjust. The front seats are quite accommodating even for a large adult like myself. They're well cushioned and you won't really have a problem even over long journeys. The cool thing is they pack in an extra level of adjustability. Removing the front headrest and reclining the front seats all the way down creates these lounge chairs. It's a nice way to relax after a day of adventure. Over to the back seats. The rear doors give the Jimny a convenience the three-door Thar and Gurkha can't match, but the door sill isn't all that wide and it is quite a step up inside. As you can tell, the rear seat of the Jimny is not the most accommodating for large adults like me. Now I'm just under six feet tall, the front seat is set to my driving position. I'm okay on knee room, but this is un doubtedly a narrow cabin. In fact, it's not even uh, classified as a five-seater, it's a four-seater. You can just accommodate one more passenger alongside you. Now, seat cushioning is quite nice, but under thigh support is limited. Uh, the backrest angle is also upright in its stock position, but you can adjust it to make it slightly more comfortable. Headroom, again, will be something of concern for taller passengers. As for amenities, at the back you get power window switches which are on the doors and uh, that's pretty much it. No center armrest, no rear air conditioning vents for the passengers at the back. Irritatingly, there's no load sensor on the rear seat, so the rear seat belt reminders beep for 90 seconds even if the seats are not occupied. The luggage area is accessed via the side hinge tailgate. A hydraulic strut smoothens its opening, but it does open wide, so you'll need to park accordingly when loading or unloading luggage. Luggage space is a decent 211 litres and enough to accommodate two medium-sized suitcases with ease. Making the rear seats upright opens a bit more space and you can fold the rear seat backrest to free up even more room. So far, we've talked about the exterior and interior and established that the Jimny is ace off-road. But what's it like to drive on the road? Opting for a ladder frame chassis SUV generally entails some compromise in terms of ride comfort. The good news is that compromise isn't all that big on a Jimny. Now, it isn't as sophisticated as a monocoque bodied compact SUV in the way it goes over bumps and you will feel road shock in here as well. The thing is, it's never as bad as it can get in other ladder frame SUVs. What's also nice is that the steering doesn't kick back on the harshest of bumps and lumps. On the hill roads around Dehradun, we didn't get a chance to maintain high speeds, but the overall sensation was of the ride being a lot more settled than a Mahindra Thars. The winding roads also revealed more about the steering. There's quite a bit of slack at the straight ahead position and it takes its time to respond to inputs. The Jimny does not feel engaging in the corners, but it's not expected to either. Handling wise, it is okay. You will have to give more lock than you would in a typical compact SUV, but you can get used to that. At parking speeds, the steering does require some effort. There are more turns lock to lock than you'd expect and the Jimny's turning circle is a lot larger than you'd expect for such a small car. As mentioned earlier, the Jimny is offered solely with a 1.5-litre naturally aspirated petrol engine that makes a middle-of-the-road 105 horsepower and 134 Nm. Like other Marutis that use this 1.5-litre K-Series engine, uh, the Jimny feels uh, its best in low-speed city confines. Uh, performance is pleasant and in the hustle and bustle of city traffic, you really won't mind the build of speed. It's just that when you get going faster, you'll realize that this engine doesn't have all that much to give. The engine runs quiet enough in town and performance is adequate. The engine doesn't like to be hurried or rushed and when you do try to pick up the pace, you will find this otherwise pleasant sounding engine suddenly become a bit coarse, a bit vocal and as if it's out of its comfort zone. 
Even when you press down hard on the accelerator pedal, it sounds very labored, but the build of speed is just not there. You'll experience this when you're driving uphill as well, because this engine just doesn't have the mid-range or the punch that we've come to expect from the latest lot of turbo petrol units. The best way to enjoy the Jimny is to adopt a relaxed driving style. The Jimny can be had with 4-speed automatic or 5-speed manual gearboxes, but both have their own quirks. The 4-speed automatic gearbox also feels very last-gen. It's very laid-back in nature and doesn't take very keenly to sudden inputs at the accelerator pedal. There are no paddle shifters and manual control is via L that keeps the gearbox in the lowest possible gear for the given speed, 2 which limits it to second gear and OD off that prevents the car shifting into fourth which is the overdrive gear. Gear shifts on the Jimny manual called for some effort and its clutch wasn't typical Maruti light either. Expectedly down on other Marutis are the fuel economy numbers. The Jimny manual has an ARAI figure of 16.94 kpl while the auto's figure is 16.39 kpl. Auto stop start that automatically switches the engine off over long hauls is part of the package, though notably the Jimny uses Suzuki's older K15B engine and not the newer K15C version that packs in dual jet tech for improved efficiency. Suzuki's 1 litre booster jet turbo petrol engine is not headed to the Jimny, and that's a pity both for the performance it would give and lower price tag it would have allowed. You see, the Jimny's 1462cc petrol engine means it doesn't qualify for small car excise benefits available to cars less than 4 meters long and with petrol engines smaller than 1200cc. Maruti is also firm there won't be a lower priced two-wheel drive version. Prices for the Jimny will be announced on June 7 and our estimates are for a starting price of 12 lakh rupees with the fully loaded auto coming in at about 15 lakh rupees ex showroom. So, is the Jimny for you? If you're merely looking for something different to the current crop of compact SUVs, the Jimny with its distinctive looks and unquestionable charm has appeal. But fact is, it won't be as easy to live with or comfortable as a like-priced monocoque SUV. The Jimny steering needs effort, the engine is unexciting and it's not generous on space either. Judge the Jimny for what it is, however, that is, an out-and-out off-roader that can also perform on-road duties and you'll find a stellar proposition. It's simply brilliant off-road and its lightweight, small dimensions and four-wheel drive system give it giant killing capabilities. What's more, the practicality of those rear doors means friends and family will be more willing to join in on your adventures than they would in a three-door off-roader. So, if drives into the wilderness and off-road meets are frequent events on your calendar, you'll find the right fit in the Maruti Suzuki Jimny. The long wait for one was worth it.